Hey, my name is Ben Mears, and I'm the community manager for games at SideFX Software. And we're here at IndieK talking to people about Houdini. Most people know Houdini as a VFX software for movies and uh, TV shows, but we're here showing people that you can use it to make video games too. My name is Luis. I am a developer at Feeling Arts, which is an indie game studio. And I am currently working on Dragon Maze, which is a 3D platformer based on Nintendo 64 games. So you have a cute character, you have two art, but the game is not easy. It is in development for PlayStation 4. We have green light on Steam right now. Thank you if you voted for the game. Since I was able to use Houdini, the visual quality of the game has improved a lot, so I can focus on the quality of the, of the game. So instead of making like a lot of variations on the art on one single asset, I only create a procedural model which can be tweaked. I can achieve a better quality very fast. We're showing another game, it's called Planet Alpha 31, and it's developed by Adrian Lazar, who lives in Denmark, and he's a one man team making the game all by himself. He's using Houdini to make everything you see in the game pretty much, and then he puts it into Unreal Engine to make the game work. And he's been working on it for a couple years, and it's already greenlit on Steam, and should be coming out on the consoles too sometime in 2016. It's a really cool game, it's a puzzle platformer. You're an uh, astronaut who's exploring a kind of abandoned planet, and they were doing some terraformation on it that's gone crazy, and uh, so basically the planet is trying to kill you. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and yeah, look forward to coming out soon. Hi, I'm Matt Swattis. I'm a games intern at SideFX Software, and we're working on a procedural city that we're going to be running in a VR game using the Oculus Rift. So this city here that you see was made using Houdini. All of the buildings and all of the streets, all the content you see here is done procedurally. It's all based on one curve, so we're generating roughly about one square mile of city, all from one curve. I can show you what that curve is and what it's doing a little bit. So if we dive inside my network here, you can see these are all instance points. So they're pulling from a library of parts that I created and instancing to all those points. This is the curve that I've drawn. You can go in and edit this. You can change the points and it's going to realign the city. And what I'm using this curve for is to define the downtown area. So the downtown area is where you're going to see your skyscrapers and more of your large buildings and the outlying city is going to be much smaller. So then I'm taking this shape and fracturing it up to get sort of different patterns for my roads and then my city blocks. And then doing a few more operations to embed some attributes that are going to drive the generation of the city. And then you can see here, after a few different operations, I've generated some floor plans that I'm going to use to create the buildings. So we can set this to polygon view. If we change it to polygon view, I'm going to change the seed for the skyscrapers. So you're going to see those change. So let's just put zero. And it's going to take a little bit of time to cook, but it's going to update and put different skyscrapers. So you can effective, you can change the different buildings individually um, by painting each lot, or you can do them overall like this. So let's put a new seed and see what else we have. And there we go. Different type. And then if you switch it back to points, it's going to cook it all down to instance points and um, reinstance all the geometry back to it.